Another quick way to do this, and I particularly like to do this when I'm doing it by hand, <clears throat> is to simply figure up the average of the second quarter sales values and then just divide those by the total average. So what I would do there is I would just say our second quarter for the first one is 45 and the second quarter number for the next year was 42 and the second quarter value for the next one was 49 and the second quarter value for the fourth year was 41 and I'm just going to divide that by how many? 4 because we have 4 years. So in this case we have 4425. Now if you remember the average that we have for our total is 58 so I'll just point that down there just so we can see them side by side and to just make this even more fun I'll put a little line there so we can see that all I'm going to do is divide 4425 by the 58. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say 4425 divided by the 58 and voila if you'll notice we have the same exact value here that we had down here. So I like to do this way. It's just a little simpler to do it by hand that way. We just add those values up for second quarter, divide by four. Again, we're just getting the average sales for second quarter and dividing that by the average sales for every period all added up. Now you don't want to break these down and come up with averages by year. You could come up with an average by year and then average all those averages, but heck, that's a lot of extra work. Just get the average for all the numbers and divide your average by whatever period you're interested in by that average and you get the seasonal index. Excellent. Okay, now we have figured out how to calculate the seasonal index for a particular period. Now, moving on to what seems to be a little tricky formula here, but it's really not all that tough as long as you understand how to put the formula together. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of read the setup here. Checkers wants to find the number of students walking in the store with a USB drive hanging around their necks. That would be me, of course to predict Checker Burger sales. So using the data below and assuming again a linear relationship, we just want to calculate the slope of the relationship. So for every student walking in, how many Checker Burgers do they buy? So wow, that's a, that's a pretty complicated thing to figure out, it seems like. So in this case, I've actually given you the formula down here, and this would be something that you want to keep handy, but just having the formula it's not much good if you don't, have to, don't know how to use it. So let's take a look and let's decipher this guy here. So our slope is going to be the sum of x times y. Our x's times our y. So in this case we've taken our x's, multiplied them times our y's, and we have a value here. Now we've done this for you so you didn't have to do all this with your hand calculator. But then we've taken our x times our y's. Now x is the number of people coming in with a USB drive around their neck, and Y is the number of Checker Burgers that they sold that day. It doesn't mean these people ate 75 Checker Burgers, that just means how many they sold that day. So we multiply those guys together, and then we add them all up, and we get a value of 62.56. Now X bar just means the average of your X's. N means the number, so how many do we have? We have 13, so N is always going to be 13. Your sum of your x and y's is going to be this value here. Your x bar is your average of your x's, and your average of your x's is here, in this case 6.3. y bar is your average of your y's, which is 75.384, etc. And then we get back over here. We have x squared, so this is 8 times 8, 64, and then we add all those up, and we get our sum of x squares is 554 and then we have x bar squared so we have x bar all right we're going to come down here and we're good all right so as hopefully everybody is clear x bar remember is your average of your x's and again we have n is 13 so let's go ahead and solve that in a, in a quick formula within Excel. Now again, this could be done very, very easily by hand with a calculator or even just a pencil and paper. Let's do it in Excel so we can kind of see the answer here pretty easily. It's easier than shining a camera at a piece of paper for you. So remember, what was our sum of our x and y's? The sum of our x and y's, in this case, 
of x times y is right here. And then we're going to subtract. Now what was n? n was 13. So I'll just type that in there. I could use the count function, but I'm just going to type it in there. In this case, our x bar, which is our average of our x's, is this value here. And we're going to multiply that by y bar, which was our value here. And let's go ahead and just figure out what that is. All right, we have 74.46. Now that's the top of our of our equation here. So if this is a, a ratio, we have a the top of the ratio is here and the bottom is over here. So let's go ahead and calculate the bottom separately, then we'll just divide them. So we're going to have the sum of our x squares. So if you remember, I'll slide this back up here so we can see, x squared is here, so our sum is going to be that guy. And we're going to subtract again n, which was 13, and we're going to multiply that by we could take x bar and square it, but we could also just take x bar and multiply it twice. Let's just do it that way. Let's take x bar and we'll multiply it by x bar again. So we have 74 and 36.76. So if we're going to calculate this number divided by this number, it's going to be simple. Let's just take 76 and divide it by the 36 and we're going to come out with 2.025. Well, what in the heck does that mean? What that means is that for every person that comes in, the checkerburger in a week, that has a USB drive hanging around their neck, Checkers sells an extra, a two extra checkerburgers. So I think you guys can probably see how that could be true because just about every time I walk in there, I buy two checkerburgers. So, that's what that means, and that's how to calculate it. So if you're, if you're presented a bunch of data, even if you don't have these values down here at the bottom, which are certainly nice and convenient for you, you should be able to calculate all of these values, all of these values. Well, we've made it a little bit easier for you here by providing this for you just to save some time. But the key is to understanding what these components of the formula are. Um, so what the what this sim, what the sigma symbol is the sum of x y's of x times y n is your count of how many periods do we have or how many pieces of data are we looking at x bar is the average of x's y bar is the average of the y's and we have the sum of our x squareds and then n and then we have x bar again our average of our x's squared or x bar times x bar we give you the same answer okay. Well, study hard and give this all a try. Now, what I'm going to do now is pop over to some similar questions where I've just changed the numbers around. So go ahead and make some notes, and I'll send a, I'll post a PDF for you guys of these as well, so you can try this at home. I know you're excited. In this case, we have a forecast in January for 2000, January 2010 of 190 units. We have a regression equation here. Seasonal index factor for January, assuming three years of monthly data beginning January 2007. Now we have a similar problem from before. Alpha is 0.2. We have different periods here. You're solving for the, you got to get the forecast for the sixth period. So you're going to have to work your way down like you did before. And down here we have sales data. We still have quarterly, but now we're looking for the seasonal index for the third quarter. And we have a similar checkers problem. So we have the same type of data, but whoa, we have some different numbers here. So we're going to see what happens here to checkerburger sales uh, in this case. So got the same formula down there, but we've got some different numbers here. Just going to see if you can calculate it out with a different set of numbers, and we'll get those answers out to you um, in a jiffy. So good luck, and I look forward to hearing from everybody soon. And happy modeling.